Well, we work as most film institutes, I suppose, uh, keeping in touch with all the, the big festivals and the smaller festivals and uh, the niche festivals and uh, uh, of course the festivals and the markets are the, the main platforms for, for Swedish films. And uh, then we try to be very strategic and have meetings with the producers as well as the sales agents and cooperate very closely with them when it comes to uh, prioritizing where you want a film to, to open or have its world premiere and uh, it's getting more and more important I think for, for Swedish films to, to have a, an important start of the, of the film's uh, life and uh, I think Swedish producers are, are more and more aware of this um, and really think that also the Swedish uh, success of the film uh, is built on on the international trip of the film because you can get a lot of extra attention by by starting at a nice festival or uh, being sold to a couple of countries before it opens in Sweden and uh, we really feel that at our, our department. Well, I, I, I think there is a, a very broad spectrum of Swedish films uh, at the moment. We have the very um, uh, big uh, Swedish crime films which have been successful in the, in the last few years with films like the Millennium Films, uh, The Girl with the Dragon Tattoo being the most successful one, which opened doors for, for the genre of Swedish crime. And, uh, and Nordic crime uh, also. Uh, so we have those films which are, are box office successes and we also have a lot of other type of films like uh, the, the more artistic festival films which uh, um, are, are successful at international festivals and win awards and so on. So I think there is some, something for, for almost everyone uh, coming from Sweden at the moment and, and that's a very nice uh, aspect of it, I think. Mm. Then, I, I, I think we have, a, we have quite a strong, uh, long film tradition in Sweden and I think Swedish films are, are considered to be of quite high quality when it comes to the making of, of films and, and the production, the post-production at least. And also we have a very strong um, tradition of acting, like uh, the, the uh, actors are really much in focus in, in most Swedish films. And uh, it might come from Ingmar Bergman and the old tradition of, of uh, acting on screen. Um, that's a, an important part of Swedish films, I think. Mm -hmm. And also there, is, there might be some uh, exotic touch in, in Swedish films because it's a very small language, Swedish, and, uh, and uh, the environments are, are not so uh, known to many people in the audience. And uh, we have the changes of weather, we have the summer, but we also have what we saw more of in, in the last few years, the Swedish winters with a lot of snow and... Uh, in the 60s and 70s and in Swedish films it was always summer, almost, mm -hmm. and now it's quite often winter and cold. Well, uh, um, the aim, the overall aim of the Swedish Film Institute uh, remains the same, to, to support the production of Swedish films and also the preservation. Uh, we have uh, one of the oldest film archives in the world in Sweden. And, uh, and also, uh, of course, uh, getting the films out to an audience, both in, in Sweden and elsewhere. Um, but in the beginning, in the 1960s, um, the Swedish Film Institute was actually uh, a producer of films and that's a big change because uh, we don't produce films anymore, we support the production of films uh, financially and uh, as in, in, in all the Nordic countries that's a very important part of the financing of, of films, the state support. Um, but we, we, the Film Institute felt that it started to compete with the private actors producing films and that was not uh, considered to be the right thing to do. So 
we don't produce films anymore. And the same goes for uh, distribution of films. The Film Institute had its own distribution of films for decades and it, that doesn't happen anymore. And the, the uh, import of, of foreign films as well, mm -hmm. we stop because uh, other companies do that in a good way and we shouldn't compete with them. So that's, that's quite a major change. But for the for the overall aim, it's it's still the same. It's uh, it's the production and the preservation and of course the promotion of, of films, Swedish films. Yes, it's important, and I think uh, networks uh, like the European Film Promotion. Uh, I think those networks are, are important for European films uh, uh, and it, from my point of view, especially when you go outside of Europe, it's uh, really important to, to have uh, a stronger network to, to fall back on and uh, uh, lifting the promotion of European films is of course really important. And within Europe I, I think it's also important to have projects like Producers on the Move in Cannes or or uh, shooting stars in Berlin because it puts some focus on, on the European films and what we're strong at and uh, what would uh, attract audiences to European films. Mm. Also I think it's a very good network for, for the people involved in, in the network because the, the change of knowledge and the, the exchange of knowledge and um, all the experiences we have is really uh, worth a lot I think for, for Well, it's, we're really lucky to have Scandinavian films, I think, because it's such a small network. It's five countries, and uh, although we might think that we're uh, quite different in many ways, uh, to be honest, if you go further away from, from uh, the Nordic region, or uh, especially outside of Europe, um, people might not find any difference between a, a Swedish or a Norwegian or a Danish film. Um, so we become much stronger together, the five countries, and uh, we're five small countries, so um, it's, it's very good. And then being part, all the five countries of course, being members of the EFP, and, and being part of the EFP is, is a broader network with a, a, a lot of more countries to compare and, and to... Uh, so I think the complement, the, the, the two organizations com complement each other in a, in a good way. It's a, we have a very strong uh, cooperation within the Nordic countries, uh, but it doesn't coincide at all with uh, being part of EFP. And the biggest difference, of course, is that within the Nordic countries, uh, Scandinavian Films is such a small organization, it's only five countries. It's, uh, it's, uh, we're almost in touch on a daily basis uh, in Scandinavian Films. We, have, we don't have the kind of projects that uh, EFP has. Uh, we don't have uh, projects like lifting the, the Scandinavian producers, for example. Um, we have common stands at the major festivals. We're always under the umbrella of, of Scandinavian films in Berlin and Cannes and Toronto, for example. And we do common, common projects like uh, a Nordic focus in Guadalajara, which we will have in, in March 2013. Um, we can do that kind of projects, but we wouldn't do try to compete with the projects that uh, EFP has and uh, we're happily part of those projects. Uh, we don't organize the same type of projects. Mm -hmm. We have smaller corporations to, to highlight Nordic films, like uh, a bigger country like France or Germany would have only to highlight their films. We become much stronger since we're five small countries and together we're, we're like one of the bigger countries. Yeah.